Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be reviewing a few of the pieces that I picked up from Dior's holiday collection, the Atelier of Dreams collection. But before we get into that, I just want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring this portion of today's video. You guys know I've worked with them numerous times before and I keep coming back because I love their pieces. I always seem to be wearing at least something from Ana Luisa in every single one of my videos. If you enjoy the dainty jewelry that I wear in my videos, you will definitely love Ana Luisa. Even this piece is from Ana Luisa. But I got to pick out a few pieces from their new arrivals page. So cute. I, I got earrings this time. I was really excited. I find their jewelry to be very good quality. I haven't had anything break in the year and a half that I've been wearing their stuff. Nothing has faded in color. And they really keep up with the trends and they just keep coming out with cute design after cute design. So let me show you the newest additions to my collection. So this is the first one. These little baby hoops with this these dangling pearls. I've been wearing this one a lot. I think it's a statement earring that still isn't too overstated. Absolutely love this pair. And then I also picked up these hoops. These are so cute. They have a little pearl hanging on the hoop. I love pearls. I think they're so pretty, but this is casual, but with a little bit of spice. So I really have been liking these. And then the other pair that I have is similar to the one that I'm wearing, but a little bit more subdued. Very, very elegant. Uh, so they're stud earrings with a hanging pearl. And they're just so cute. They really add, again, they add a little bit of a statement without being too much. Much. So, so I love all of the pieces that I have right now a lot. I keep alternating these earrings because I love every single one equally as much. Um, and all of them are going to come in a really nice pouch for you to take care of the jewelry and have a place to store it. I seriously know you guys are going to love them and I know I've put a lot of you onto their jewelry. I notice none of their jewelry irritates my ears and I can have very sensitive ears. If I wear not good quality jewelry for more than 12 hours, my ears start to get irritated. I don't feel that with Ana Luisa's pieces so I keep coming back many good reasons so I will have the link below to shop in the description box definitely check it out let me know if you picked up any of the pieces I'd love to hear your thoughts all right and without further ado as you can see I look a little crazy with the two eyes let's get into the review <laughs> So I was probably more excited about this collection than I should be, but I just think that this collection is absolutely divine from Dior. And to be honest, this might be one of my favorite holiday collections that they've come out with. Well, I did just order a few pieces. There's a lot of other pieces in the holiday collection that really have caught my eye. Now, everything has launched at different times. I don't like that. It's kind of hard to keep track. It doesn't make it actually seem as much of a collection. But right now on the Dior website, they do have their holiday collection all lined up in the new arrivals page for you to be able to see. So while I only have the two eyeshadow quints and then the blush for today, I mean, all of the lipstick sets are beautiful. I was heavily eyeing the Atelier of Dreams limited edition lipstick holder and case, but it's almost $200 and I just couldn't get myself to do it. They have an ad Advent calendar, a beautiful red lipstick, a couple actually. They have some nail lacquers. And what caught my eye the most probably is the face, eye, and lip palette. I almost got it and I'm kind of regretting that I chose not to. I kind of want to ask for it for Christmas because the packaging is absolutely stunning and there also is that eyeshadow palette that is beautiful so definitely worth taking a look at if you are into luxury makeup but I just picked up the pieces that I personally was interested in the most so let's get into it so I ordered these from Selfridges and it's just crazy to me how good and fast Suffrages shipping is and they're coming from across the ocean <laughs> from the UK and it gets to me so quickly and everything is well packaged so I also pay the subscription to get free shipping which is a lot of money so I try to use that 
when I can, but at this point, the collection is available on the Dior website, and I always love ordering from the Dior website because the gift with purchases are always awesome. Packaging itself is always so beautiful, so I do recommend Dior. However, sometimes their customer service is iffy, so just keep that in mind. I also saw that these were available at Saks Fifth, so every place that this is available, I will have linked down below for your convenience. Let's get into the products. Like I said, I picked up both of the Atelier of Dreams Quins and then the blush. And right now, I feel like I look like I'm dead. So I want to get some blush on my face. So we're gonna do that first. So this is the Rouge Blush. It does specify on the website that this and everything in the collection is limited edition, which is true. When Dior says something is limited edition, it most often is actually limited edition. So here's what the back is going to look like it just gives instructions for how to best use the product the ingredients are going to be right here and you can see on the side that this has a 12 month shelf life and the product itself is made in france so the blush is going to come packaged with the nice slip to protect it i used to hate these but now that i'm moving i'm holding on to them to help hopefully save them just in case it goes through rough transit and it's in the typical normal dior packaging which I mean we pay a hefty price for this I really feel like Dior needs to update the outer packaging the inside is absolutely beautiful and Dior's been doing a great job but let's um let's update this a bit right wouldn't that be exciting so here is what is on the back now this blush is $46 it's a lot to pay for a blush you do have a mirror and then here is the blush completely untouched and you can see that there are some glitter specks in here. But turning the light down a little bit, you should be able to see the color a little bit better. It is shimmery, and I haven't touched it because I just want you to take a moment to acknowledge this embossment that I'm gonna have to ruin, unfortunately. So take a screenshot. All right, here we go. I don't know where to touch. Let's do the center. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It looks very, very shimmery. Keep in mind, I'm right in front of lights, so it's reflecting light a little bit more but she's shiny and here's our swatch. So if you don't like glitter in your blush, I would say this is not going to be for you. The color seems quite faint. I wonder, is this an overlay? Let's see if this is an overlay first. And maybe if we dig down a little bit, the overlay will come off. So I'm just gonna take my brush. Like completely ruining this blush, I'm really sad. Okay, so I feel like I brushed off the top layer. Looks a little less glittery now, let's see. I mean, they're still in there. Did it change at all? No, I think this is just a glittery blush. It does not appear to be an overlay. I'm actually not really liking how this is looking. And Dior formulates some of my all-time favorite blushes. I feel like they can do no wrong with blush. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit closer and I do have the lights down so you can see color a little bit better but everything else might seem a bit dim. But I'm gonna use a blinged brush at 14. We are getting a little bit of kickback but nothing crazy. I mean, this is leaving quite a trail of glitter on the cheek. I have to say, this is not my favorite blush from Dior. It almost seems to look more like a highlight, honestly. They do advertise it as a blush. And the glitters are, aren't are even evenly dispersed on my cheek. I feel like the glitters are a bit patchy. I don't know, this seems like a holographic highlighter more than a blush to me. This does not look flattering on the cheek at all. I'm going to take my Sonia G Detail Brush and I'm gonna apply almost more like a highlight. Honestly, I feel like if you have a more rich complexion than myself, I would use this as a highlight. This would look beautiful on deep complexions as a highlight. For me, it just looks unflattering. I do not like this blush. I do not think it's worth $46. I think there could be a use for it, maybe as a blush topper, or if you have a deeper skin tone, I think it would make a phenomenal highlight. But it's not giving me any color really on the cheek. You can see a little bit of color, but it really is just glitter. I feel like this ruined my base, honestly. Oh! Well, the shade is called Hologram, and it's described as a shimmering pink. I will say the shade is called Hologram, but it just seems more like glittery to me than an actual blush. It's supposed to enhance cheeks and cheekbones with a guaranteed healthy glow effect. 
it. I mean, I suppose a finish like this was to be expected with a name like Hologram. But for $46, personally, I cannot recommend this. But like I said, deep skin tones, this is a highlight. Would be so stunningly beautiful, but if you have my skin tone, this is kind of an awkward blush, so. Unfortunately, I don't like this, so I'm not going <laughs> to recommend it. And that's really disappointing because Dior has some of my favorite blushes of all time. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Nude Glow highlight. Might as well add a little bit more shimmer. And my cheeks are just gonna look like this the whole video. I'm gonna try and take my sponge, kinda get rid of the glitter up here. Not a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the Atelier of Dreams eyeshadow quince here. And I love Dior quince when they're good, but they're inconsistent from collection to collection. If you're buying from their permanent line, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to like the quint. If you're buying from a collection, I cannot guarantee that. There definitely is a lack of consistency there. They play with different formulas in their limited edition collection. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. So that's why I bought these, just to let you guys know if it's going to be their amazing formula or not. And I'm going to do each palette on each eye because I feel like they look kind of similar. I want to see them side by side. If you need to take a look at the back of the boxes, they're going to be right here. As you can see, both of these have a six month shelf life, which is a very short lifespan for an eyeshadow palette. Comparatively, I reviewed the Viseart palettes the other day and those have a 36 month shelf life. Six versus 36. Now, do I actually listen to that? No, but it is something worth mentioning. They do not come with a sleeve. They just come with the palette itself. Again, the same packaging that, in my opinion, is totally outdated and cheap. And both of these are made in France. Both of these are $65 each. So let's take a look at House of Dreams. This one's gonna be the more cool toned one. Absolutely beautiful. It definitely leans more taupe. Let me just show you even if we're not getting to this one yet. So we have the Atelier Dore and then the House of Dreams. So this one is more taupe and then this one has more neutral browns, slightly more warm and gold. Let's do House of Dreams first. Both of these are up my alley in terms of the type of neutral shades that I love. And I haven't touched them yet because I want you to look at the embossments. I've already taken my pictures, so I have that. It's really sad that we have to ruin the beautiful embossments. Hey Dior, instead of focusing on the beautiful embossments that we're going to ruin, why don't we work on the outside? Anyways, let's swatch. Mm. I'm like, don't want to press too hard, and then let's get the center. So here's what they look like. They seem to be swatching quite beautiful. Let me add another layer of this. This is a satin pinky shade. Then we have, this one is a little bit lighter, a little bit more champagne. They're not giving me too much pigmentation wise. Okay, the silver is though. That's highly reflective. Let's get the last two. We have this true kind of taupe shade and then a matte brown. These feel like they're gonna be a really lovely formula on the eyes. I think I'm going to like this. Now I know these two shades, especially towards the top, swatch may be a little less than desirable, but I reviewed a Tom Ford quad yesterday and it was literally the worst Tom Ford quad I have ever come across. There was no pigment to those whatsoever. This, I can tell, is going to be a beautiful, soft formula. There's a time and a place for that. Not all shades need to be extremely pigmented. That Tom Ford formula, terrible. No pigment. This Dior formula seems like it's going to be a beautiful, just soft formulation. An intentionally soft, yet still beautiful formulation. Anyways, let's apply her. I'm going to start off with this top shade right here. Just using an Olimar Cosmetics crease brush. And we're going to use this to add a little bit of depth. Now this isn't too deep on my skin tone. If you're any deeper than me, this is going to be more like a shimmery skin tone shade for you. I think it lays the base down for a very soft look. It's nice and pretty. With a refer number 14 brush, we are going into the chocolate shade. This is not really chocolate because there's not much warmth to it. But look at that. Very pretty, very good level of pigmentation, but still soft and blendable. I really am enjoying this formula so far. I think it's definitely a hit from Dior. And I'm just going to keep this color focused on the outer corner. And I'm also going to carry that to my lower lash line. 
just on the outer parts, keeping the depth back here. Next, we're gonna take this taupe shade right here. I'm using an Esam W21. I'm going to start off with this on the inner half of the lower lash line, and you'll see specks of glitter everywhere. It's from that blush. <laughs> this is very pretty. I'm going to take it on the side of my brush. Let's see how it does on the lid. See, it's softer, but if I were to just put this all over the lid, it would be such a beautiful, soft work look. I like this a lot. I'm just going to use the same brush that I did wipe off. We're gonna go into the silver shade right in the center. I'm nervous about using this on the rest of the lid, but this shade, absolutely beautiful. It has so much dimension and it's quite pigmented. I'm actually gonna go back into the taupe shade just to bring this color back into the look. The silver shade's definitely a different formulation than the rest of the palette, but I like that it's different because it feels intentional. It feels like this is supposed to be the pop shade of the palette. This is supposed to be more glimmery and pigmented and reflective than the rest because everything else is supposed to be a sophisticated soft look. Okay, and then I'm going to use the sponge applicator that this came with. I'm going to pop this on the inner corner. Beautiful. Let's carry it a little bit under as well. I'm going to take that original crease brush that I used and here is the final look before I move on to liner and lashes here. I really, really like this. I think this is a truly beautiful, sophisticated palette. I can see so many of you guys really enjoying this palette if you like to play more with neutrals and keep the makeup quite natural. This is a beautiful winter palette. I like this one. This one is gorgeous. Okay, let's move on to Atelier. It's Dore. I'm probably saying that wrong. So this one is a little bit warm. I wouldn't call it a warm palette, but next to the other palette, it makes it look warm. Let's do our swatches here. This one definitely leans more gold. This one feels a little bit more hard pressed. Let's get the gold in the center. I do like how the center shade is kind of the pop of the palette. So I'm gonna swatch it right below so you can see how the two palettes would compare. Again, these are just such soft, sophisticated shades. Then let's get the gold. And the gold is what's going to bring life into the palette. We have a deep, shimmery brown, and then a matte, dark brown. This seems quite similar to the dark matte brown in the other palette. Yeah. I mean, these two look almost the same, but they're such a necessary color. So I like that I have them layered here so that you can see which quad is more to your taste. I would say for me, the House of Dreams definitely appeals to me more, but you can't go wrong with this color story either, truthfully. Put down a little bit of my Dior concealer. This Dior concealer is one of the best, most versatile concealers. While it's not my number one concealer for the under eyes, it's my number one concealer to use as like a foundation, as a touch-up concealer, to cover blemishes, eyelids. It's really great. So I'm going to use almost the same technique to apply the shadows in the same placement as the first eyeshadow palette just so you can see really how they compare and defer. We're starting off with this shade right here as the crease color. So this one definitely provides more depth than that first shade we used in the House of Dreams. It's quite gorgeous. Let's get into the chocolate matte brown. These have the perfect level of fallout. It's not too much, but it's soft enough to where you feel like you're actually picking up product on your brush and that you're going to get pigmentation, but it's not messy. Look at that. Thank goodness these are as pretty as they look in the pan because if they were not a good formula, I was going to be really sad because they are too pretty not to be good. We're using the Esam 21, getting into the chocolate shade. I would say this palette's definitely deeper. If you like deeper, more smoky looks, this one could give you a good smoky look. And I'll apply that also right next to the matte shade. You know, I said this one I liked better, but I don't know. I really like how rich this is looking. I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. I wanna take this color, which swatched very soft, and I'm gonna put this all over the lid instead. I'm using my finger because it does feel more hard pressed. This is not that impressive of a shade, but it does add subtle brightness to the eye. As you can see, it awoke in my eye, but I am gonna put the center shade all on top of that. I just wanted to show you how this would look all over the lid, but let's go into 
this shade, which is really gonna add the glimmer to the look. Yup. <laughs> Gorgeous. Honestly, I can't really tell you which one I prefer. They're both beautiful neutral palettes. I could tell you, I don't think, you know, it's necessary to pick up both because they're both neutral palettes. It just depends on what you think you wear more, but they're both so pretty that if I could only pick up one, I don't know which one I would pick up. They're both stunning. Let's have, let's let that thought marinate. I'm going to apply liner and lashes and I will be back with my final thoughts. So here is the final look. So I did a very, very thin line of liner and I put on some Ardell Naked Lashes. So they're very natural. I just felt like sticking with natural for today because of the neutral tones, but big fan of both of these palettes. I'm sure you've collected this at this point, but the blush, it's a no for me. Definitely not worth the money, but I do think both of the quints are worth the money. I think they are a beautiful formulation on par with their permanent eyeshadow. So I'm very happy to see that this is their good formula and I hope it stays that way from here on out. I'm a big fan of both of these. I still don't know which one I would pick. They're both equally as beautiful. It's challenging because they both are somewhat similar. Now, they're $65 each. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you pick up both. If you are interested, I definitely recommend picking up at least one that you feel like you would wear more. But I'm very happy with both. I'm really excited about this collection overall from Dior. The blush was a bust, but I'm still eyeing other pieces in this collection that look divine. So if you picked up any other pieces that I didn't, let me know in the comments what you thought of those. Is it worth it? Do I need to pick them up? <laughs> Seriously, I'm heavily eyeing the other products in this collection. And again, a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys click the link in the description box and it will take you to all of the pieces that I'm wearing and then you can take a look at all the other gorgeous pieces that they have. So thank you guys so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.